Hi everyone, welcome back to the My Clayco studio. Today we are going to be having some fun creating with micas and pigment powders on polymer clay. Now if you haven't used these before, they are fabulous. If you follow us on our socials, you will know that we are slightly obsessed with them just because there is so much you can do with them. I'm going to be running through a few different techniques today. We're going to be looking at coloring your clay with them. We're also going to be doing some stencil art and I'm going to be showing you some really cool chameleon powders. Today I am going to be using uh, my Clayco pigment powders as well as the Jacquard Pearl X pigments but you can use whatever you have handy. If you don't have any pigment powders on Mica handy, you can actually also use some makeup. So eyeshadow for instance will work in a similar way. So if you've been looking for something to do with those blue eyeshadows from the 70s, this is it. Now make sure you stay until the end because we are also going to be talking about some sealants that we use with micas and pigment powders. But for now, let's get onto the fun stuff and start creating. We are going to kick off our creating today by colouring some translucent clay and creating a faux stone effect with that. And we're then going to be colouring some liquid Sculpey with the pigment powders. Now I've got some translucent Cernic clay here and I'm also going to be working with this Reflex Violet Perlex pigment. So what I'm going to do is just color this clay using the powder. So, and I'm going to color one darker than the other just so you can see the difference it makes with adding a little versus adding a bit more. So let's just add, now a little bit goes a long way. So I think what we will do, let's look at adding that amount there and I'm gonna add a really, really tiny bit to this because I do want there to be some contrast. Just thinking we might add a little bit more to this one. Okay. So I'm just going to fold this over and basically we're just going to work in that colour. Now we do quite often get asked what is the difference between mica and pigment powders. So you will find with micas that they've got this beautiful pearlescent luster to them and they are a bit shimmery, whereas if you're working with just straight pigment powders, they're going to be a more matte finish. The other difference I find with micas and pigment powders is that pigment powders do tend to have a more concentrated color. All right, we're starting to get here with this. Now what I might do is just work on a lighter one here because I'm thinking potentially we may need to add a little bit more of the Pearl X to our other piece. I just want to make sure that there definitely is some really nice contrast there. Ooh, it can be hard work mixing by hand. I might go run these through our pasta machine and I will be back. Okay, so we've got our two colors beautifully mixed and we've got one that's a bit darker and one that's a bit lighter here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually just going to chop these up. Now, you don't need to be a perfectionist with this. We just wanna have cute little cubes. As you can see, they're not perfect squares, but that's totally fine. And I'm just going to chop this one up the same. Once again, <laughs> definitely not perfect. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to create a bit of a faux stone look with this earrings. There are a few different ways that you can do this. Some use paint, some use liquid clay. I'm going to be doing a pretty simple version of it today and I am just going to be adding some metallic leaf. All right, now with my metallic leaf, so I'm going to be adding a 
thought some gold would look nice with this. But I'm also going to be adding some purple. All right. Mush that all together. We want to make sure that it gets dispersed throughout. Nice and dispersed throughout while still giving it a bit of randomness. Because as we know, if you look at a real stone, they're definitely not perfect. All right, I'm just squishing this into kind of like a little cube here. And then what I'm gonna do is cut some slices from it. And we're gonna make a sheet that we can cut some earrings out of. And I'm just squishing it together because I wanna make sure that there's no holes and gaps there where we put the bits of clay together. Okay, the moment of truth. Look at that beauty there. That is going to turn out gorgeous. So what we're going to do now is just slice these up. I'm really happy that I went with the two tones of the purple. I think that is going to make a really nice effect. So try get these cuts as even as possible. As you can see, I haven't done a great job of it but it just means we're about to lay them down flat. It just means that they will come together better if we have even pieces. Okay, let's have a look at this. It's gonna look great. Okay, so as I said, we are just going to lay these down. And we want to make sure that we don't have any gaps in here. So if you do have little gaps, you can kind of just squish the clay in there. Okay. And I'll just take my roller and I will just roll this together. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, and I am just gonna run this through the past machine. Okay, so I have run it through the past machine and it is looking beautiful. So I'm just gonna pop it down here. I'm just gonna burnish it to my towel. Now, if you don't have a past machine, that is fine. You can do this all by hand. I am just trying to take out some of the hard work. <laughs> and we are then gonna cut out some shapes with our cutters. Okay, let's peel this off. When you do this technique, it is almost never a clean peel. That doesn't matter. What matters is the end result. If you do have little bits like this that get stuck in there, that's fine. Once we've baked it, we'll just be able to pop them out of there. I just like to take off as much as possible so that I can reuse the rest of this. There you have it. Time to get those baked. So the next thing we're going to be doing is colouring some liquid clay with our pigment powders. Now I have pre-baked these cute little flowers and we're going to look at just colouring in the middle bit of the flower there. So I have just a silicon mixing bowl and this autumn copper pigment. I thought that it might look nice with that pretty lilac colour. Okay. 
and we'll get some of our liquid clay. I'll just pop this here and I'm just going to squeeze this in. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Ooh, and you can already start to see where it's starting to mix. I think this color is going to be gorgeous. All right, so let's try mixing that in. And then if we do want to add some more liquid clay afterwards, we can. I always love this bit. Look at it. Look at it. It's beautiful. I can feel that that's quite stiff. I am actually just going to add a little bit more liquid clay. can see that's now got that gorgeous coppery tone. It's actually quite fun to experiment with all these different colours. And see what you come up with. Okay, so I'm just going to be actually using it a dotting tool here to apply this liquid clay. I find them pretty handy with making sure that you stay in the lines. So and as you can see, the consistency of uh, liquid clay isn't super runny, so it's quite easy to work with. And we'll just do our other one here. I'm just going to move this because I'm at serious risk of that going everywhere. There we go. Oh, that makes it a bit easier. So, and with this, because it is a liquid clay, you do need to bake it for it to set. So you don't have to worry about this drying or anything while you're working with it. Which is great. Now, I have pre-baked these flowers but you don't have to. So if you have watched our video on trinket dish making, we make a crocodile trinket dish and we use this kind of technique using liquid clay. But that's actually done on raw clay. So you can use raw clay or baked clay. I tend to prefer to do it on baked clay just because I'm always nervous that I'm going to squish the raw clay in some way when I'm putting it on. Or the other fabulous thing is that if you do make a mistake, you can actually just wipe this off and start again, which is awesome. Okay, we've got our pretty little flowers. And they are also ready to be popped in the oven. So our first lot of pieces are baking. The next thing we're gonna do is have a play with some chameleon pigments. So the two that I have today is, are the Cameroon and the Panther Chameleon Pigment Powders. So this one, the Cameroon, has a bit of a bluey green two-tone effect, whereas the Panther one is more of a bluey purpley two-tone effect, which is very cool. So whereas your normal micas and pigments just have the generally one flat color, your chameleons will have multiple colors in there when they catch the light. Now, before we do make something, I wanna show you something with these chameleons. And this really goes for all pigment powders and micas as well. They will turn up differently on light and dark clay. And one thing to remember with chameleon powders, a lot of the time they do look better depending on the color mix that you've got there. A lot of the time they do look better on dark clay. So I've just got our panther chameleon here and I am just going to brush this on. So we'll just brush this on and I'll give you a good look at this in a second. And you will see that on the white clay, it really doesn't have much of an effect. You can't see it very well. Whereas on the black clay, it has had a dramatic effect. So I'll just bring this up so you can see. 
you still get a little bit of that shimmer on there, but it's not to the same effect as you do get on the dark clay. So one thing that I can suggest doing with these is if you do have pigment powders or chameleon powders, you can make some swatches of white clay and black clay so that when you do come to use them, you know what kind of effect you're gonna be getting if you use white clay versus black clay. Okay, let's make some cute things with these chameleon powders, hey? I'm just gonna pop our pant one out of the way and we are gonna start with the Cameroon one and these cute little chameleons. Okay, so I've got my clay all ready to go. This is just a green we've got going here that I thought would team well with the Cameroon. And we are going to get some of this Cameroon Chameleon Powder and just dust it over the top. And it just means that when they catch the light, they're going to get this beautiful two-toned effect, which is quite fitting for a chameleon. Now, when you are applying micas or pigments, you do want to work on raw clay. If you try and put it onto baked clay, it will just dust off. I'll just hold that up so you can see. So we've got that beautiful little shimmer on there now. And the next one that we are going to do with our panther, um, I'm just going to use this texture mat by the wonderful girls at Coral Copper 2. And we will cut out our snakes with our snake cutters. Make sure I get these in the perfect spots. Like using a clay press because you can get a really even press all around with your cutters. And that one up and we have our other cutter here. Definitely easier to do when you're using a lighter color clay, but I'm gonna be using the Panther Chameleon Pigment and it looks wicked with black clay. Uh, Panther Chameleon Powder. And dust this on. Oh, I love it already. Beautiful, I'll just give you a look at that one too. Okay, so we are gonna get these into the oven to bake and while they are baking, we're gonna be doing some stencil art with pigment powders. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna be doing today before we look at sealing our pieces is some stencil art. So what I'm gonna start with doing is just taking my stencil and I'm just going to lightly roll it into my clay. It is a great idea to use depth guides just so we can make sure we maintain an even thickness. All right. And I thought the colors that I would use with this, I'm gonna go a bit of a two-tone effect and I have the sea glass here and also the duo blue green, which I absolutely love. And I've also got these little tubs. So the reason why I'm using them is that I'm worried about cross contamination and I find that it's really handy to use these little tubs so that you don't have that. Okay, so essentially all that we're going to be doing is just brushing this onto our clay. So I'm gonna start with our sea glass here. And 
I'm kind of just going to do all of the centers. I'm hoping that we can get similar to like a kind of Skinner blend effect by blending the two. And don't worry about all of this excess stuff here because we will make sure that we get rid of that. I absolutely love doing this kind of stencil art with pigment and mica powders. I find it very relaxing and therapeutic. Like how you have adult coloring books. I feel like this is adult coloring for polymer clay artists. Only the fabulous thing for me is that I don't actually need to stay in the lines. The stencil is doing that job for me. So I'm just gonna pop all of this stuff to the side. So you don't wanna sneeze or something and powder go everywhere. And I'm just gonna grab a big brush. As I said, this is a very important step to make sure we don't have any residual pigment powder or mica there. All right. Are we ready for the big reveal? Wow, look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I have a few different cutters here and now I have the very tough decision of what is gonna be the right cutter to use with this. So I think that will look cool. I think that might be a bit too geometric. All right, see how we go with these. When I'm cutting out my pieces, I try and make sure that they're quite similar. You don't have to, but I just like having the two similar pairs of earrings. Then I'm gonna go real basic and I'm gonna cut out some circles for us. So there is nothing wrong with circles. And I think circles are great because they give you a chance to actually show off the design that you've got. So the great thing is with the leftover scraps from this, we can literally just roll it all up, squish it together, and it's gonna end up being this gorgeous pearlescent, bluey, greeny kind of color. Okay, are we ready? And once again, we are gonna go pop these in the oven. Now, when I come back, I'm gonna have all of the creations that we've made today, and we are gonna be talking sealants and the different ones that we use. So we've baked all of our pieces, and I really just wanna give you a quick look at them. They have turned out amazing. We do now need to put some kind of sealant on there. Now, it's not 100% vital that you do seal them, because if you have a look at this, if I take this piece and I rub my finger, you can see it doesn't actually come off. But you will find that even, even if you've brushed it all off, no matter how much you have, there always seems to just be a slight little bit of residue. So I always think it's a great idea to just give them a really thin seal over the top to make sure that it all stays put. Now, our exception to this rule are our beautiful flowers that we've got here because they were done with a liquid clay and we mix that pigment into the liquid clay, we don't need to do anything with these guys. So I'm just gonna put those ones to the side. Uh, now, the other thing that I did wanna show you, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? So you can see with these ones, we've got that beautiful mix of the darker pigmented clay mixed with the lighter pigmented clay and I'm so happy with how they turned out. With these ones, I have just popped a thin layer of resin on there. So you can see that they've come out really nice and shiny. I'll give you a look at these. So we're not gonna be going through resin today. These have been done with UV resin 
Uh, that is a whole nother video in itself because you do need to be careful when you're using resin and make sure that you adhere to proper safety precautions and wear all of the gear necessary. Um, but what I thought I would do is I would just show you the difference between sealing these with just a gloss glaze versus the resin. And you can see why I love resin for four stone because it just makes it look absolutely gorgeous. So what we are gonna do, I've got these little pots here. Again, I like to just put my glazes in. So the glaze that I'm gonna put on the top of this one is just a sculpy glaze. This does not wanna open for me. So just going to squeeze a little bit more of the gloss glaze in here. And we've also got our satin glaze here. So I'm just gonna top this one up too. And we've got our brushes. So I'm just gonna do this one with the gloss. Now again, I use these little tubs just so I don't accidentally cross contaminate. So say if some mica was to get in here and I was to destroy this, at least I haven't ruined my whole bottle. Now with this Sculpey glazes, so they are made for clay, so they work really well with using with clay. They're so simple, you just brush them on and they're dry in a couple of minutes. Which is why I use them a lot, because they're just easy to use. So you still get like a little bit of shine with the gloss, but it's not like the resin piece that you've got there. You don't get that high domed shine, but it still looks amazing. So if you're not re using resin, it doesn't matter. The gloss glaze also looks fantastic. Okay, so we're just gonna pop that one to the side. And what I will also show you is the satin. So we might use the satin one. So the brushes that I'm using, they are uh, my Clayco ones, but I mean, you can just use a normal paintbrush. Or the other thing, which is what these are based on, is makeup brushes. So I love makeup brushes, how they're just really fine and soft and I find that they give you a really kind of streak-free varnish. Which can be quite annoying if you end up with all of these streaks. So that's why those really fine bristles are fantastic. And don't worry if you're a little bit heavy-handed like me, this will dry clear so you don't have to worry about that. Ooh, got a beautiful shine to them. I'll just bring this one up so I can show you. Beautiful. I love the satin because I think it just doesn't take too much away of the effect that you've already got going on there. And now last but not least, didn't they turn out beautiful with that two-tone effect in there using the two different powders? And I think with these, we're gonna go the satin again. Now we do get quite a few people say that when they try and do this, that their um, pigment kind of blends and muddies up their line. I think the really important thing is to make sure that once you have finished doing your stencil art, that you do a really good job of brushing it off. The other thing that I like to do is kind of just make sure I hit all those colored bits before I cover the whole piece. Then you can just make sure that those colored bits are staying put before you hit it up between the lines. We do use Sculpey glazes a lot just because they are so easy, but the other great alternatives, we do have the Cernet one. If you are using the Cernet one, again, it's made for clay, so it's great. 
but if you open this up here, it does have secret instructions in there and you do need to give it um, an extra little bake. I think it's for about 15 minutes once you have applied the glaze. The other one we do use a lot is this Perlex varnish. Um, the thing I love about this one that I do a bit is you can actually mix your pigments and micas in with this Perlex varnish and then apply it to your pieces, whether it's earrings or decor. Um, I'm sure that you can do that with other varnishes, but that's one of the things that this varnish is designed to do. So I normally stick with that one if I want that effect. So there you have it. We have some beautiful pieces that we've made here using our pigment powders and micas. I'll just give you one final look at what we've created. Thanks for watching today. I'm sure you'll agree we've created some beautiful pieces using pigment powders and micas. If you do have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We're always happy to help. But thanks for watching. We'd love you to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.